First of all, thank you for the uh, invitation and for the opportunity to be here and to present you uh, kind of uh, approach uh, in the Czech Republic. We have three lectures, so uh, I would uh, start with that and then, then my colleagues Antonin and Stepan will, will continue on that. Um, the topic is sustainable refurbishment in the Czech Republic. Uh, I will talk at the beginning generally uh, about our approach in, in cultural heritage. I have to say that it's uh, similar to Slovenian approach. We have the same history, we have the same roots, so, so it is, uh, it is uh, nothing special from, uh, from that point of view. And then at the end I would like to present four examples. Um, the history of the monument protection uh, in the Czech Republic or in formal Austrian monarchy uh, started in the middle of 19th century uh, when the Central Commission for the Exploration and Preservation of the Buildings and Artistic Monument uh, was, uh, was founded in Vienna. So uh, we have more than 150 years tradition of, uh, of uh, somehow, let's say, cultural protection. Uh, at that time, there were two ways how to protect buildings. The first way, uh, the first approach, it is called puristic restoration. Uh, it's called French school. Uh, that was very rigid, and the aim was to clean all the mon monuments uh, of the younger historical styles and bring them to so-called uh, ideal state. The second approach at the time was uh, maintenance and conservation of a preserved state. Uh, it was called English school. But uh, in the second half of the, of the 19th, 19th century, the puristic restoration was, uh, was uh, uh, dominated. At that time, we have some, some examples, uh, and those examples uh, are, from our point of view, considered uh, that it is not the good, good approach. So, and these buildings are very important in our, uh, in our history, for our uh, architectural history. The first example is the is finishing of the St. Vitus Cathedral at the Prague Castle. Uh, the, History is huge. It, it started. It started in 13, in the middle of 14th century, and it was finished in this puristic style. Oops, sorry, sorry, sorry. It was finished in this puristic style in in the 30s, and this this window was designed according to according to this puristic rules uh, in the 20s. So this is not. This is not Gothic, this is uh, Neo-Gothic, and it is quite new. Compare it to, compare it to, to uh, Le Corbusier from that time, and from our point of view, that this, that this one is not a good approach. Similar case, uh, another, let's say, one of the top, top ten historical monuments of the Czech Republic, the Cathedral of uh, Santa Barbara in Kutná Hora. Kutná Hora, it is the former um, mine town uh, about 50 kilometers uh, from Prague. Uh, the cathedral was started uh, also in the 14th century and it was finished also in this puristic style in the, uh, in the beginning of, of uh, 20th century. Last example from that period uh, is the uh, Karlstein Castle. Uh, in 1996, the huge renovation of that castle uh, was done. By these, all these projects uh, have been done by the, those architects uh, Friedrich Schmidt and Josef Mocker, uh, which were considered as, or are considered as, uh, as the great architect uh, of their period. But uh, from our point of view, those approach, uh, those approach. Uh, uh, is not good, and it is also something which has we have to have in mind that the the approach can change in in the time. So uh, it is very very important. Uh, then 
1958, the National Heritage Institute uh, was was founded. Uh, you can you can uh, see this is the web page, so you can find uh, some information about uh, our National Heritage Institute. Uh, the National Heritage Institute has uh, three main activities: research, uh, development, and methodology of monument uh, protection management of monument properties under its uh, owner, ownership and also methodolog methodological uh, assistance uh, to owners of monuments uh, open to public. So, uh, and it is the state-sponsored body under the Ministry of Culture of the Czech Republic based on national and uh, international legislation. Uh, we have a law for uh, national uh, for heritage preservation, Heritage Preservation Act, uh, which was uh, signed in 1985. Uh, and also Czech Republic has signed the Convention for the Protection of Architectural Heritage of Europe in the 1987. Mm. The monument protection Itself, itself is uh, on the very high level in the Czech Republic. Uh, as said before, as mentioned before, uh, it started under the government supervision uh, in the late 50s, and it is based on the Czech leg le legislation. Uh, now, or in 2012, we have 40,000 historical monuments. 40,000 historical monuments are listed in the Czech Republic, the number is, uh, is changing every, every year. Some, some of the monuments are demolishing. Uh, also those things happened in, in Czech Republic. Uh, some other uh, buildings uh, which were not considered to be a monuments became a monuments because the, 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 the view on that uh, importance is, is changing. So f we have 40,000 uh, historical monuments. But this is, I don't know which percentage uh, is that uh, of all existing buildings. So this is, the, if 5% it could be, or 1%, or I don't know. So this is only part of the problem of refurbishment of existing buildings. Uh, next part is focused uh, to the state, state subsidy for refurbishment of existing buildings. So not only... Uh, I would like to uh, to show you or to present how our government uh, supports, financially supports uh, renovation and restoration, not only for cultural monuments, but uh, uh, of existing buildings. Uh, panel block of flats, this is also a very important part of our building history. Uh, I don't know how it was Slovenian, but, but in, in, in our region, in former East Germany, uh, it, it uh, is really a big topic. Uh, so we have uh, programs which are called panel or new panel. Uh, the program, uh, those, those uh, programs are running since uh, 2007. Uh, under the Ministry of Regional Development, uh, part of the Ministry is State Fund of Housing Development, and uh, together with, uh, uh, with uh, uh, Czech Moravian Guarantee and Development Bank. Bank. Uh, the aim of the program is to provide cheaper loans for the owners of block of flats to support of reconstruction and refurbishment of specific apartment houses with the aim to improve their quality and lifespan. I wouldn't say that this one is a great example of, of architecture, of a great architectural approach, but from the ener uh, energy point of view, something was done, the building was uh, refurbished, people uh, can save money for energy cost. So let's say uh, also this, this approach has to be, uh, has to be supported. Uh, this program, uh, it is called Green Savings. Uh, it's quite new. Uh, it started in uh, 2009 and uh, it has two phases. 
first phase uh, was uh, finished in 2011 and now uh, in September 2013 the next, next phase started. Uh, it is around this program under the Ministry of Environment uh, and the part of the Ministry is State Environment Fund. Uh, the Green Savings Program focuses on support for heating installation using renewable energy sources, uh, investment in energy savings in a reconstruction and new residential building. So this program is focused only for residential buildings and it has two parts. It supports new buildings and also, also existing buildings. Mm. The program supports quality insulation of family houses and multiple uh, dwelling uh, houses, the replacement of environment unfriendly heating for low emission biomass fired boilers and efficient heat pumps, installation of these sources in new low energy buildings, installation of solar therm thermal collectors, as well as construction of new houses in the passive energy standard. Uh, the money for this program uh, has been achieved uh, uh, from the funds, uh, from the sailing of uh, emission credits under the Kyoto Protocol on greenhouse gas emission. And the program is divided into following six, five or six parts. Uh, energy savings in heating, uh, construction in the passive energy standard, uh, use, as said before, uh, use of uh, renewable energy sources. Uh, the specific point is subsidy bonus uh, for combination of those approaches. So if you design new passive house, uh, from the technical point of view, the building envelope is well uh, insulated. And then if you add some some friendly heating and uh, heat recovery, etc. Then you you uh, become uh, you get more money, uh, and also the design process is uh, is uh, uh, supported financially supported. So there, there there is special money, uh, special subsidies for preparing the project in in this uh, standard, and special part uh, is energy saving in public buildings. You can use, uh, as said before, it is a part of this uh, is uh, for renovation, uh, for renovation of existing buildings. So you can use this program also and combine it with some with some uh, with some um, financial support from the culture uh, branch. If you if you are facing to uh, if you if you are designing. Uh, restoration or renovation uh, of refurb or refurbishment of a uh, culture protected building. Of course, it is necessary that the National Heritage Institute has to prove your, uh, has to prove everything. It is part of the, of the uh, building permission, uh, of the process how to get building permission. So in that case, uh, it has to be uh, discussed with the uh, authorities. Uh, a few numbers. Green saving. The first part of the green savings uh, program. Uh, there was uh, 20.7 billion Czech crowns in in this program. 700 new passive houses uh, uh, have been built in in uh, within the, uh, this program and uh, have been supported. 36,000 family houses uh, were supported and changes and uh, energy savings. Uh, in, in uh, existing family houses and 6,000 residential uh, buildings were insulated or the former, the, the old uh, energy system was uh, replaced. As I said before, the second uh, part of this program started in, in August uh, 2013 and uh, 27 billion of Czech crowns are prepared until 2020 uh, to, to be uh, for, for support in, in this field. Uh, divided by 25 or 27 now. Uh, the last program, uh, it's called Green Landmarks. Uh, here you can 
you can uh, see the web page. And this is the program, uh, or this is the project, let's say that this the project uh, which combines energy savings and uh, cultural heritage protection. Uh, one of the outcomes of, of this project is uh, this book. It is in, in Czech language, but uh, I leave it here. If you would like to go through it, there are some examples. I will uh, talk about uh, one of the examples uh, which is mentioned in that book, but you can have a look how, uh, how it works. It was supported by the uh, Ministry of uh, Environment uh, and the part of the state National uh, State Environmental Fund, uh, and uh, this project initiated uh, this NGO, which is called Slavonická Renesanční. Uh, Slavonice is the uh, Renaissance city uh, with the with the uh, culture protected uh, uh, historical core, historical Renaissance core, which is in South uh, Moravia. The aim of the project. Uh, was to promote and discuss the idea of uh, lowering energy standards of historical monuments and buildings in the Czech Republic. The Green Landmarks project makes it possible for experts and different interest groups to meet and compare their perspectives. So the, the discussions in the Czech Republic between the architects, between the people who are involved in energy savings, in energy systems, and between the people uh, from the branch of uh, cultural protection, the discussion is is uh, is there, and uh, yeah, uh, these are some examples which are mentioned in the in in the book. I will talk about about this this building, uh, and one of the outcomes of this project uh, is the official publication Green Landmarks. Uh, it is possible to download it on, on that web page. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, it is in Czech language, but, uh, but there are drawings, pictures, photographs, numbers, graphs. So also for, for uh, the technician, it is, it is clear, quite clear. Good examples. Uh, I would like to present four, four projects uh, which are considered uh, as a good example how to renovate uh, buildings and how to decrease energy, uh, energy consumption of that building. Before I start, I uh, just would like to categorize uh, uh, the uh, existing buildings. Uh, it is something similar to, to uh, Slovenia, so the, the first group are architectural monuments. The second group are buildings, uh, which are not at itself architectural monuments, but they are in protected historical reservation or a zone. Uh, then the third group of uh, buildings, uh, they are buildings with historical value, but they are not protected by law. Uh, and the, the last group of buildings, they are buildings without recognized cultural historical significance. I will talk about this. ABC groups. Uh, National Theatre in Prague. Uh, this is definitely one of uh, our main, uh, main architectural monuments. Uh, I would say that it is one of the top 10 or let's say top 5 uh, architectural monuments of the Czech Republic. And the there was a project how to decrease energy demand of, uh, of those buildings. You can't see any changes on, on that building, which is good. In this case, this is really good. Uh, and something about the history, that was, uh, the building was built in uh, 1981 and rebuilt it after the Great Fire uh, in 19, uh, sorry, 1883 by architect Josef Zitek. A uh, new building was, was added to, you can see here, this is the, this is the new building from the, from the late 70s that was also a big discussion in that time uh, if it is good or not. Uh, and this new building and first renovation was in uh, 1977 till 1983 by architect, uh, it was designed by architect Karel Prager. 
and uh, energy savings uh, have been done in, uh, were done in uh, 2007 and the uh, initiator was the facility manager of uh, the National Theatre, Mr. Miroslav Ružička. Uh, the measures, energy for heating and cooling was decreased. Uh, first part, reconstruction of the central energy system uh, for heating and hot water. Advanced control system was installed. Uh, heat, recovery, uh, heat recovery from air conditioned part of the buildings. Here, recovery uh, from the stage technology, uh, using advanced uh, AC air, air conditioning uh, system combined with thermal heat pump. Uh, it allows using thermal energy from the uh, river, river Voltava and from uh, heat gained from south facade. And uh, which is quite uh, interesting, uh, also a small PV plant was installed here on the, on the roof of the new building. Uh, energy for lighting, uh, uh, saving light uh, sources uh, were installed, water savings, s saving flushing, f flushing and showers were installed, and the savings in total. 50% of uh, gas consumption per year was saved, 30% of total energy demand was saved, uh, 500 megawatt hours per year was saved for lightning and uh, for uh, 4,000 cubic meter uh, of water was, uh, was saved. So that, that was the uh, first example. Second one, uh, this is the building in a protected zone. So the building itself uh, is not protected. Uh, it, is, um, uh, it is called House of Personal Development Maitreya. Uh, it is owned by private ownership and the aim was to, to uh, build their center for uh, personal development. Uh, uh, yes. I don't know if you have been in Prague, but this is, this is uh, Old Town Square, so this is uh, in the uh, historical center. And here, this is the building, what we are not now talking about, the, the Maitreya house. And here, the approach was completely different. Of course, energy savings were part of the, were part of the project, but the architect, uh, Mr. Holtzman, uh, or sorry, just uh, a brief history, the Building was built in uh, 19, uh, 1898, uh, but the first house on that place was in 1361. Uh, so the history of the place is very old. Uh, the House of Personal Development has several auditoriums, apartments, and vegetarian restaurant. Here are some pictures how it was restored. Uh, it was restored in, in this. Uh, style. Uh, architect Hosman uh, was the, is the author of this project and the main concept was so-called building biology concept. So not only energy, uh, not only uh, decreasing energy demand, but also using uh, as much natural based material as, as possible, which in those conditions, if you have such an old building in, uh, in a reservation zone, if you have to talk with all the authorities, uh, that is a very big challenge. And what, what they achieved? Inner insulation, that was uh, about eight or 10 uh, centimeters of inner insulation uh, was uh, added to external walls. Uh, and the insulation is based on a reed. Uh, clay plasters and uh, Moroccan stucco plaster uh, are on, on, the, on the walls. The clay plasters are there uh, not only from the design point of view but also to, uh, to uh, uh, increase, to increase uh, internal microclimate, uh, to increase quality of internal microclimate uh, uh, from the point of view of humidity. Uh, the External wall in the yard is uh, insulated uh, uh, with wooden fiberboards. Roof structure is, uh, 
insulated copies of windows are made, uh, surface treatment, oil and waxes, only oil and waxes, and energy system is uh, focused on energy optimized ener energy consumption, mechanical ventilation uh, with heat recovery. Uh, another project, uh, Folk Memory Center in Horní Marshov. This is in the mountains uh, in the north of the Czech Republic. This building is, is protected. I would uh, go a little bit faster. This is how it looks before the renovation. Uh, in 2002, an NGO called Sever bought a building and made a project to restoration and uh, renovation. Architect Schmelhaus is the author of that. Uh, during the preparing the project, uh, these uh, former decoration uh, have been discovered, discovered under the layer of, uh, of, uh, of, other, of other paintings. So, uh, because it is, this building is protected, it was necessary to, to, keep, to keep this, uh, this, uh, this decoration. Also, one of the topic was how to, how to decrease uh, uh, energy demand. Uh, former uh, energy consumption was 400 kilowatt hour per square meter per year and the aim was to decrease it to 120. And uh, one of the solution was 60 millimeters of external thermal insulation. Uh, it was not possible to add internal insulation because of those decoration. A local National Heritage Institute didn't allow that. S and the discussion started and one of the, this, this is very important, this, this part, because uh, the technical, uh, technical um, things were used for the discussion with, with, with the institute. If, if the external wall wouldn't be uh, uh, insulated, uh, there is a condensation zone uh, on the internal surface of the building during the whole winter. So all the decoration will be damaged. If you put six centimeters of thermal insulation, then there is no condensation zone here, so it protects the, the decorations. So this is quite simple. Uh, then they allowed to, to uh, have uh, uh, external thermal insulation on the certain uh, uh, conditions. It was necessary to move the windows outside to the external surface, of course. It was not allowed to glue the thermal insulation on the wall. Uh, it is only mechanical fixed. Uh, and yeah, that's, that's it. So always the solution can be, can be, can be uh, done. This is how it looks. Uh, also some uh, advanced energy systems, uh, PV cells are there, uh, photo photovoltaic, uh, heat, heat recovery, etc. Uh, last uh, project uh, is, uh, is uh, conversation of an old barn to uh, the passive uh, family house. Uh, the situation was that uh, this is the typical village structure. Uh, this is the place where, where the old, old barn were. Uh, that was in, in a bad technical shape, but it was uh, necessary to keep the, the atmosphere of the inner yard of the, of the farm. Uh, so th this, is the, this is the building. This is how it looked like. Uh, this is what, what the architect uh, designed. Uh, so the, the shape, the shape uh, is the same. And this is, so I don't know if we can call that reconstruction. So that's not a reconstruction, that's a building of a new house, new wooden building. Uh, it's now under reconstruction, but it looks similar to that, to, to, the, the, to the previous, uh, to the previous uh, state. Here's some other, uh, this is from the, from the other side some details of the old facade and new, new edit, uh, edit parts, some details of the old part facing to the, to the inner yard. That's it. Thank you for attention.